little while ago, we tweeted out that I think it's time for us to have an uncomfortable conversation. And a lot of the replies to that tweet, uh, I didn't even have to say what the uncomfortable conversation was about, but so many people already knew. A couple of the responses were uncomfortable for who? And some other people said, oh, Hobbs should have been fired a long time ago. Some people said we should have been had this conversation. Some people said we have been having this conversation for years. But that's the question that I really wanted to pose to you all. Should John Harbaugh, the current head coach of the Baltimore Ravens, remain the head coach of the Baltimore Ravens? Now, I'm, I'm not making this a, a knee-jerk reaction or anything like that. Um, but I legit, legitimately want to hear from you all on how you feel about John Harbaugh right here, right now. Because this question has come up a lot over the years, obviously. But recently, John Harbaugh has been the head coach of the Baltimore Ravens since 2008. Um, and when you watch a lot of what the Baltimore Ravens do, a lot of the mistakes that they make, it's not all on John Harbaugh. It's certainly not. But a lot just starts with him at the top. Um, today, today's game just really had me thinking because we like we're watching at home. We don't see all the camera angles that the replay people can see. We don't see all the views that they can see. We just see what they show us on TV and that's it. But the challenges in this game today, it was pitiful. Like you think about it. Think about the first one. With Zay Flowers with the catch. Lamar threw the ball jack to, to Zay Flowers and it obviously hit the ground. They showed the replay, it hit the ground. Uh and Lamar Jackson, I believe he even told Harbaugh, Don't challenge it. That ain't no catch. But regardless if he told Harbaugh or not, why are we challenging? That it clearly hit the ground. The ball smacked up off of the ground and Zay Flowers, he covered it or what, but it had hit the ground. What are we challenging that for? It ended up being such a waste of a timeout. And then the next challenge on the Devontae Adams catch on the sideline, the tiptoe catch, the toe drag swag. Very nice catch by Devontae Adams. He's an amazing player, and he made some amazing plays today. But he challenged that, and when we were watching it live, it clearly looked like a catch. We watched the replay. It still looked like a catch. Why are we challenging that? And you see the impacts, especially in the second half. The first half, yeah, too, but especially in the second half, the impacts of those wasted challenges, they end up being wasted timeouts. You see, because they challenged that Devontae Adams catch, so that dropped them to just two timeouts. And then the Baltimore Ravens, they found themselves in a bad situation. Because the Raiders, they got the ball back. The game was tied. They were getting ready to kick a go-ahead field goal. But it's first and 10. It's like, all right, a little before the two-minute warning. And it's first and 10. Raiders run the ball. They pick up nine yards. It's two minutes and 12 seconds left. What do you do? For me, I felt like, hey, don't, don't use a timeout now. You got the two-minute warning. And that'll stop the clock, obviously. But Harbaugh was playing on the side of, I guess, hey, maybe we could use that two-minute warning as a, uh, our next timeout when the clock stops, and then we could use our last timeout. But I just felt like, hey, like they had momentum at that point. And not saying that you can't get a stop, but I would have just let it go. Let it go to the two minutes, and then you try to play long because they end up getting the ball back, as you saw. Uh, but they could have had even more time had they had those timeouts. But he called a timeout on second and one at two minutes and 12 seconds. I just, I did not think that was a good idea, in my opinion. That's just me though, maybe some of y'all like, oh, and, and I could get either side of it. Like you feel like, okay, he called the timeout at second and one, you get a stop on third and one, then you get, you, I mean, you get a stop and make it third and one, then you get another stop on third down, okay. But I just don't think it was smart to call a timeout there, especially the way the game was going. Um, Cause on second and one, they got the first down. So then you had just one timeout left, and this is after the two-minute warning, too. And then, like, you, you were pretty much not necessarily done at that point, but when the offense got the ball back, you had 27 seconds left. And they, they came close. They came close, but obviously not close enough. But with the timeouts, the reason I bring up the timeouts, and we talked about them in depth like that, is because this is not a one-time thing. 
with John Harbaugh with the challenges, with the almost wasted challenges, in my opinion. This has been something that's been going on for a while, where there will just be some downright questionable challenge. Like, what are we doing challenging that? There's some challenges that where it's like, oh, Harbaugh kid, he'll go jump through the rule book and jump through these hoops and stuff. And they're like, oh, wow. I didn't even realize that. I didn't even know you could challenge. And there will be some of those. Something. But a lot of the times, it's not those. And we've been seeing this stuff too often. Time management. Poor time management with the Baltimore Ravens. They showed the stat today that the Baltimore Ravens, over the last five years, they showed the stat that the Ravens, when winning the game in the fourth quarter by seven points or more, they've had leads of seven points or more over the past five years. The Baltimore Ravens are the team in the NFL. They got the crown who's lost the most games in that time span. They've lost the most games in that time span being up by seven points or more. Now, I know there's going to be some people, hey, what about Lamar Jackson? He plays his part in that. Of course, I'm sure he certainly does. But when it comes to time management, when it comes to clock management, who would that be on the shoulders of? When it comes to the, the game planning, especially down the stretch in, the, in these games, who would that be on? Just think about it. Think about it. Another thing, too. The decision making is it's troubling, man. It's very troubling. You think about how obviously we knew going into this season, it was no question that the Baltimore Ravens offensive line, it was going to be an issue. It was going to take them some time to jail, take them some time to click, take them some time to really get it going. We got that. We knew there were going to be mistakes. We knew there were going to be hiccups. We knew there was going to be all that kind of stuff. And there has been those things. There have been some bright spots here and there, but there have been a lot of issues, a lot of miscues and whatnot. But that's part of the territory. Ravens are running some very risky business by the way that they did things. And a lot of us disagree with how they did, but they did. OK, cool. We're here now. Let's see how we can improve on it. Roger Rosengarden. They, the, the starting offensive line in this game was Ronnie Stanley. Uh, left guard Voorhees at center Tyler Linderbaum at right guard. It was uh, Daniel Filele at right tackle was Patrick McCarry. All right. That's your starters. Patrick McCarry, it was rough. It was rough, like really rough. Um, but then, and again, you're going against Max Crosby. He one of the best defensive ends in the game. I get it. But then Roger Rosengarden comes in. And Roger Rosengarden, he looks better than Pat McCarry did, even against Max Crosby, even against one of the best defensive ends in the league. Roger Rosengarden was a bright spot on his offensive line. Now, they did give some help, too. They were chipping uh, Crosby with Justice Hill sometimes, sometimes Isaiah Likely and whatnot. But Roger Rosengarden, he looked much more of the part than Patrick McCarry did. What did the Baltimore Ravens do? What did they do? They pulled him. They put McCarry back out there. And it, it's stuff like that. It's decisions like that, stuff that we've been seeing just for years. We joke about it on here all the time. We make fun of it all the time. But I really would love to know what is the issue with Ben Cleveland? Because it's got to be something really bad. It's got to be like all kinds of bad. The fact that you can, and, and now Falele in this game, he was a lot quieter. We did not hear his name nearly as much. Even though on Max Crosby, I think it was his second sack, he said, oh, Makari? Nope, let me cut it through. Oh, Falele? Nope, went right, literally went right, right past him. Right past him. Untouched to get to Lamar. Untouched. Skated right past him. So Falele, he played his part as well. But it's, it's just been weird. I, I don't know what Ben Cleveland did to where you can look at your offensive line and you can see them just struggling, struggling bad. And you got somebody sitting right there. Hey, they may not be the best person in practice. I don't know what the whole story is with it. But when they've played in the games, they have not looked bad. At that position where there's been a big struggle at. So I would think, all right, John Harbaugh always talks about it. We're going to put the best five out there. We're going to put the best five out there. That's what he always says about the offensive line every single year. 
he's not putting the best five out there. And when you don't put your best five out there, that impacts everybody. That impacts your quarterback, your big money quarterback, your franchise quarterback in Lamar Jackson. That impacts your running back, Derrick Henry. Now, he did have a much better game today than last week, in a more consistent game, I would say, than last week. Because it wasn't the Ravens that were playing catch up, it was the Raiders. So the Ravens were ahead. And they so used to being ahead in a lot of their games. But again, like that stat showed, the Ravens have also squandered a lot of games where they've been ahead. But anyway, um, the offensive line, if they ain't playing up to par, that impacts everybody. Like I said, Lamar Jackson impacts Derrick Henry. It impacts your wide receivers because they ain't got enough time to get loose. It also impacts your defense because if your offensive line ain't playing up to par, the defense is out there that much more. They get that much tired. And, hey, the defense, they were not the best today. They started off hot, but they certainly cooled off. And the offense, they weren't really doing them much favors for a lot of times throughout the game, but the defense certainly... They certainly cooled off. But this is an issue, man. This is an issue. And again, it, it, it is not even just about these two games and these two losses. They play a part, certainly, and why I wanted to pose a question to y'all, why, why I really wanted to hear from you all. But something that we always talk about, something that y'all have heard us say on here a lot of times. We go back to like the AFC Championship game last year. We talk about that. And we talk about the Ravens uh, in the playoffs we talk about how they've been losing. Not even the fact that, that they've been losing. That sucks enough, but it's how they've been losing. You go back to Lamar Jackson's rookie year. How did they lose in the playoffs in that game? Well, they kept doing the same thing over and over and over. It wasn't working. First quarter, RPO wasn't working. Second quarter, RPO wasn't working. And I respect, hey, you're trying to stick with it, trying to make it. It wasn't working. So third quarter, it's like, okay, they going to make some halftime adjustments? Nope. Third quarter, they still did the same thing. Against the same team that you just played two weeks prior. They were doing the same thing. And it wasn't working. In the fourth quarter, they finally opened it up. They saw coming back. Oh, coincidence, I think not. Who's the offensive coordinator? Marty Morningweg. All right, we can say, hey, Marty Morningweg, bad offensive coordinator. He's, get, get this guy out of here. He's terrible. I don't like him. So then, following year, 2019, Greg Roman becomes the offensive coordinator. Historical Russian offense. Y'all know the drill already. 14-2, and two, number one seed, bye week, all that good stuff. Amazing. Lamar Jackson wins MVP. Let's go. Playoffs come around. Mark Ingram hurt. Okay, Mark Ingram hurt. He got the high ankle sprain, a low ankle sprain, whatever type of ankle sprain he had. He was hurt. He didn't play. We still got Gus Edwards. We still got this guy, yeah. Still got some other running backs, too. Ravens decided, you know what? Nope. We're the number one rushing team in the league. Gus Edwards was a part of that. But we're not going to use our running backs. We are hardly going to run the ball at all. They made themselves one-dimensional. And then all the drops, they ain't help, but they made themselves one-dimensional. Made the Titans' job so much easier. Again, it wasn't, the, it wasn't the fact that they lost. It was how they lost. From hurting themselves, from setting themselves up for failure from jump. Again, who was the offensive coordinator? It was Greg Roman this time. So last year's offensive coordinator was Marty Morningweg. This time, it was Greg Roman. Fast forward to last year. Number one seed, number one rushing team, number one defense, all this, all these nice stats, accolades, all that. Go 13 and four, number one seed, you get the bye week, all that. All right. Houston Texans start off 10 10. Then the second half, you take off. I think the score was 34 10, something like that. You took care of business. Great, amazing. Let's go. Going against the Chiefs at home, at the crib. It's like, oh, yeah, we straight. Number one rushing team in the league at home against the Chiefs. These dudes just almost gave up like 200 yards the previous week. What did Baltimore Ravens do? Decided, you know what? We're going to be one-dimensional. We ain't going to really run with our running backs right there. Who cares? What are they even here for? Why? Why, why should we use them? Who was the offensive coordinator? It was Todd Monkin. So 2018, it's Marty Morningweg. 2019, is Greg Roman. Uh, 2023 is Todd Monk. So three different offensive coordinators, but the Baltimore Ravens losing from the same exact thing. Setting them, themselves up for failure before they even get started. 
setting themselves up for failure from jump. If we going through the same things with different offensive coordinators, who's that on? Who's to blame for that? That's what I say. This, this is not like a, a knee-jerk thing to the Ravens losing to the Raiders. That did definitely play a part of it today for sure. But this is something that, and it's a conversation that we've had before, but it's just one, of, one that I, I needed to pose again to y'all just to ask. I ain't trying to cause no division to call, oh, no, well, I'm all for ho ho oh, no, he didn't get it. I just want to just really hear your honest opinions on where you are with John Harbaugh right now. I've continued to say that with John Harbaugh, um, I feel like he, he's one of the safest coaches. Well, not the safest coach. Obviously, Andy Reid, the safest coach in the league. But Harbaugh, I feel like he is extremely safe. Extremely safe. Him and Eric DaCosta, they neighbors. They pretty much family and whatnot. They, they, they super, super cool, super, super close. And I respect it. I, I get it. They literally live next door to each other. They share a fence. We remember the video during the draft in, what, 2020? When they, Harbaugh walked over to the fence. Oh, hey, Eric. And Eric, hey, Harbaugh, what's going on? And they right there. Oh, I don't want to get too close. COVID, uh, but you remember. So they, they are literally neighbors. So, yeah, they, they are family. Harbaugh ain't going nowhere, though. He's not going anywhere. There have been times uh, in the past where I definitely thought that Harbaugh should have been gone. There are times in the past. And I know, I know a lot of people say the same thing. Oh, the grass ain't always greener. The grass ain't always greener. On the other side. But then a lot of people can respond to that. Well, the grass is greener wherever you water that. But with Harbaugh, it's just it's a question, man. That's it. It's just a question. And we want to know how you feel about John Harbaugh. Now, is he a bad coach? No. He's not a bad coach. But the better question is, is he the best coach for this team? I remember years ago we had the conversation because a lot of people thought, oh, man, Harbaugh, he's run his course. Harbaugh has run his course with the Baltimore Ravens. He should be out of here. It should be done. It should be a wrap. Has it? Has his error run his course? Should the Baltimore Ravens think about going in another direction in the short, near future? Man, it's a, it's a legitimate question. I ain't trying to round nobody up. I ain't trying to start. I'm just, just asking a question. I just really want to hear from y'all on if you think the Baltimore Ravens should continue with John Harbaugh. And this is not even necessarily like, oh, should he be fired right here, right now? It would be more so after the season or during the season, depending on how things go. I'm not like, all right, 0 oh 2, Ravens, tear everything up, rip up all the contracts, get all these people out of here, get all the, the head coach out of here after 0 oh 2. It is concerning, though, because we, always, we talked about from week one. How, all right, they lost. It's just one week, though. It's, it's, it's one week. And it's against the Chiefs. So, okay, cool. All right, it is what it is. But this game was just a little different. Cause this was, and now the refs, they played a part, too. Because there were some uh, ticky-tack calls and whatnot. But, again, just watching how this game broke down, watching it live just come apart, unravel before your eyes, it was a sight to see, man. Not a pretty one, either. Not a pretty one. But we've just, in my opinion, we've seen that too much over the years with these Baltimore Ravens teams, especially in the biggest moments. But it's just been an issue. And that's it. No team's going to be perfect. We don't expect perfection from any team because the coaches will make mistakes. The players will make mistakes. Everybody will make mistakes. We get that. But some of the stuff that goes on with the Baltimore Ravens, and starting from the top, it just, in my opinion, a lot of it is inexcusable. It really is. So, I'm, again, just making this video because I want to hear from y'all. Hear what you think. Hear what you got to say. Looking forward to the comment section for this one. And I'm, I'm not even coming on here saying, oh, fire John Harbaugh right now. No, I just, I really want to hear from y'all. What, what are y'all thoughts on John Harbaugh? On his current tenor with the Baltimore Ravens, how he's been doing with the Baltimore Ravens. Do you think he can get the best and the most out of these Baltimore Ravens? Let me know.